This is a recounting of two stories, one of a reptilian encounter, another one about a demonic encounter and what the entity looked like on a pilgrimage of a young woman with her mother on Mount Sinai in Egypt. Mount Sinai being one of the areas that uh, Moses received, of course, the Ten Commandments, and one of the, lo one of the locations, that is, where the tribes of Israel had uh, stayed after the exodus from Egypt. Very interesting events that are true, and for your benefit, I want to recall them here. A story about a woman and her reptilian encounter. Unfortunately, there are a lot of people today that uh, feel that, well, you know, these things only uh, affect you if you believe in them. And I don't believe in them, so I, they have nothing to do with me. Well, you're the first target that they'll go after because you have no way of protecting yourselves with any spiritual uh, fortitude. Now, this is on Unexplained Mysteries by Enos. My Reptilian Encounter, location Ireland and Australia. I want to start the story on a positive note. The encounter changed mine and my family's life for the better. I used it as the catalyst for my shadow work and spiritual growth. I could go on as far as saying that I now love this experience and I'm grateful to it because it has set my life on a magical trajectory. A year ago, my life was not so positive. This encounter was breaking me. Mentally and emotionally, I was really struggling. Fifteen years after the reptilian encounter happened, I was suffering from delayed onset PTSD. My relationship with my partner of 17 years was falling apart. Our three young kids were suffering. My eldest child is an empath and felt my intense fear. He began to act out how I was feeling. He was frightened to look out the windows at night, feeling that something was lurking in the darkness, waiting to take him away. Hearing noises, feeling someone watching him, frightened to close his eyes, but equally scared to keep them opened. And the more I tried to push the image of the reptilian from my head, the more she intruded. I began having flashbacks, which led to anxiety attacks, intense shaking, and my world was dark. The encounter, one night in my early 20s, that was in the early 2000s, my partner and I were driving along a dark road in Ireland. We always played deep, intricate house music to zone out while we drove, and we never had conversations on journeys. It was almost like meditation. The headlights of our van lit the immediate darkness. Just a few meters ahead, on the hard shoulder, an old woman came into view. Stooped so badly, she was looking only at the road as she shuffled along in the darkness. My partner and I acknowledged her simultaneously. Quote, what the is she doing out here? End quote. Almost immediately after our acknowledgement of the old lady, time slowed right down from about 120 kilometers per hour to slow walking speed. It was almost like we had hit an invisible wall, but without the impact. Then time jumped forward in increments, like watching a slightly uh, scratched DVD. The stooped old lady was now only approaching my wing mirror. All sense of time had vanished. I couldn't avert my eyes. Nothing else existed. Not the road ahead, time, our transit van, not my partner, not my physical body. Only the outline of my window and the wing mirror, the darkness and her. And looking down on her stooped form, still just below my wing mirror, her head detached from her body, but on a long neck, her head still facing the ground, snaked up to my window, bringing us face to face. She had green eyes that glowed in the darkness with vertically elongated black pupils set into a face covered in scales, in murky shades of green. The space where a nose should be was flat, her mouth opened wider and wider, and I saw teeth that were tightly packed, sharp and protruded more and more the wider she opened her mouth. And then time resumed and we continued on our journey. I want to mention something about this experience. For those few seconds, if I can even put a time measurement on it, I felt the reptilian's feelings. She was really angry that I saw her. She didn't want to be seen. How she felt has been a part of my healing journey. I have had many realizations stem from this 
Another story, maybe? My partner and I did not speak of this experience for many years. Not, I'm not even sure if we remembered it. And when I fell pregnant with my first child in 2012, the memory was suddenly there again. I asked my partner if he remembered anything about it, and he snapped at me, never talk to me about it again. I don't want to know. With his triggered reaction, I knew I had not imaged it. Notably around this time, during an energy healing session with a friend, I discovered that I had an entity attached to me, a shadow entity who I have met three times since, and again, that's another story. My partner had experienced something indescribable about, uh, but to a much lesser degree than me, and when I spoke of the encounter, I held back, never letting myself fully reveal and relive the experience. That was until about 18 months ago, following the birth of my third child. I emigrated to Australia many years ago, spending the last six years in Cairns, far north Queensland, having recently moved to a small sugarcane farming town just outside of Cairns. My brother, who, who I am incredibly close to, emigrated soon after me to live in Brisbane, Australia. At work one day, at listening to the radio segment on alien encounters, a guy called in with a story. His story, incredibly similar to mine, took place in a cane farm just outside of Cairns, Australia. An old woman in the distance stooped over. She was standing alone in the darkness of the cane field. He looked away for a second, and when he looked back at her, her body remained where it had been, but her reptilian head was face to face with the sky. My brother called me to tell me what he had heard, and this phone call was the start of my healing journey, although I didn't see it this way to begin with. I thought the reptilian had followed me from Ireland. Was she looking for me? Was she going to hurt my kids? And with a newborn and two other young kids, a very unstable relationship and miles away from loved ones, my dark night of the soul began. Now this is the true event of a pilgrimage, one of my friends and her daughter, before the daughter was married. This happened about 20 years ago. And uh, my friend was recalling to me what happened when they had gone for a pilgrimage to Mount Sinai. You know, usually when they go to the Holy Land, uh, they can take like 10 days of traveling, 12 days, and they first go to Mount Sinai, Egypt. This is it, the St. Catherine Monastery. It's a male monastery, and uh, it's been there since... Uh, Wow, 3rd century, 4th century AD. And um, this uh, has a tremendous, beautiful library of ancient works, ancient early uh, Christian writings. But the mountain behind it is Mount Sinai. Supposedly, this is where well, the location where uh, Moses received the Ten Commandments. And the burning bush is actually found inside the monastery of St. Catherine's. That burning bush that... Uh, St. Moses the prophet saw the uh, bush that burned but uh, was not consumed where he received uh, when he first heard the word of God so uh, there are pilgrims that uh, hike up to the top of the mountain and they leave, in the they leave at dawn they get up there and then they come back down and it's a grueling hike to go up there but it's a blessing because um, as you can understand, this is uh, Mount Sinai. So she was going up with the other pilgrims and her daughter by her side. The daughter must have been, what, 18, 20 years old, something like that. And um, the whole time they were talking to each other. Of course, the mother was in the Christian Orthodox Mysteries, Holy Confession, Holy Eucharist, but the daughter was not, even though she was baptized. And um, the whole time that they were going up, the daughter was telling her mother, Mother, that black goat with those uh, yellow eyes keeps following me and staring at me. Look at it. Why doesn't it just leave me alone? Why is it always at my side? And the mother would say to her, Well, never mind. Don't give it any attention. Just, you know, be careful where you're walking so you don't fall down, you know, because... You can see the mountain is very cragged, and you have to be careful how, how you're hiking up there. And um, so the, the goat was always black by her side, this black goat. And um, as they were coming back, they went up, and of course it was a blessing for them. It was very uh, 
a very pious devotional filled moment um, experience and then they were coming back down and they, this black goat was uh, at the side of her daughter again and the daughter kept on telling the mother look there it is again it's following me again I mean I don't see it following anybody else why is this one following me at my side and the mother again said to her just don't pay any attention to it just be careful where you're stepping we have to be very careful as we hike back down again all right so when they got down at the bottom of the base of the mountain of uh, the mountain and uh, by the way this is a male male monastery no women are allowed in there but they do have uh, areas where they can sit as you can see the people here uh, on the outside of the walls the women especially the women so um, when then they got down at the base of the mountain the mother told the daughter that there was nothing there it was uh, only she that could see it and it was most probably a demonic spirit and uh, that's what she explained to her daughter but she didn't tell her anything while they were walking up coming back down because she didn't want to uh, you know shock her or uh, have her trembling from fear as to what it, you know what she would be what you would have to reveal to her um, so that happens many times you know especially when you're not in the mysteries uh, I told you what happened to uh, a Russian priest monk that oh, well, he not, he was not a priest he was a monk that I met recently he had traveled to Athens to go to uh, to you know visit something here and he to I asked him how he became a uh, monk because he said he was baptized when he was like 17, 18 years old because in Russia the practice of Christian faith was not, it was criminal, it was not allowed. So when the um, Soviet Union uh, ceased to exist, that's when people started getting baptized, um, examining and uh, researching on Christianity uh, since they were allowed to do that. Anyway, uh, he and his three bro he and his two brothers could not sleep at night until they, because uh, they were always being uh, harassed by demonic entities and um, nightmares. And the only way they could fall asleep was by reciting the Lord's Prayer, Our Father, the Our Father Prayer. And that's when they all decided to become monastics. One of them became a priest, married priest actually, and the other two became monks. So these things are very real. And... Uh, now, if they come at you like a, an angel of light, as they did to Eve, as what uh, the Apostle Paul tells us, they can even change form to become and look as, as they, though they are angels of light, whereas they're demonic spirits, or they can come in as anything. They can become a mountain in front of you, causing your car to careen off the road. Uh, this is one of the explanations the monks from Mount Athos have told us that they had done to a person that was living with his wife, not unmarried and having three children, none of them baptized. And um, this is what a demonic spirit caused the uh, man to do, to careen off the road. But a, a saint appeared to him and said, don't, it's, an, it's, a, it's not real. It's a demonic, um, what's it called? Il, uh, fake, false illusion and uh, just follow the road he told him you know and that's when things started changing in his life and he was uh, he put things straight as far as you know his marriage sacrament and baptizing his children so yeah they do bother people and they do exist and um, uh, you just can't ridicule this you have to protect yourself and your loved ones so i'll leave links below for you for this this is on um, unexplained mysteries If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on, not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever 
I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.